Hey, so I want to point out a thing called modes. In programming, basically even more generally speaking in like user interfaces, we're supposed to avoid a thing called modes, right? So if I go over here and go So mode is the thing in a user interface. And it's basically like a pop-up box that what they call a modal pop-up box, M-O-D-A-L pop-up box. And that's like if all of a sudden there was to be like a, a box right here and say maybe even this goes grayed out back here and I'm not allowed to click on anything else because that pop-up box is in the center of my screen. So um, maybe, as an example, I could launch this program. But anyway, so right here, in a user interface design, a mode is a distinct setting within a computer program or any physical machine interface in which the same user input will produce perceived results different from those that it would ha in other settings. Um, this is like sort of archaic, strict, kind of technical description of it. Modal interface components include the caps lock and insert keys on the standard computer keyboard, both of which typically put the user's typing into a different mode after being pressed, then return it to the regular mode after being repressed. An interface that uses no modes is known as a modeless interface. Modeless interfaces avoid mode errors in which the user performs, performs an action appropriate to one mode while in another mode by making it impossible for the user to commit them. So obviously there's a trade-off there, like do you want to have to hold the shift key to sit there and type all caps or do you want to have a whole another 26 keys if you're typing in the with the English alphabet you know to uh, have upper and lower case keys. So there, in some circumstances a mode can be nice and like with the caps lock key it does light up a light to say like hey you know I think that's definitely a mode and there's definitely a downside to it um, especially in a password box like if you're sitting there typing your password you're like what my password's not working and it's like caps lock keys on but that's so typical and so simple to solve that um, you have your big bright light there or and or uh, the actual user interface you're typing into even better will tell you hey your caps lock keys on so basically when you do that, for most people, that's going to solve the problem and just eliminate that trade-off for the most part of having like caps lock key. But specifically, the whole no mode. Let's see if that's in here. Okay, I'm going to show you an example of like a software mode. I don't know for sure if it will even work in this one. So I'm going to go to the about. Like in most Windows programs, you can go across here on the top menu and go to help about right, and it pops up this little dialog. Well see how I can still click all this stuff and I could come over here and like open an image or whatever if I wanted to even though I'm looking at this about screen that's modeless because I can still continue to do stuff like I could still click on that and come over here but in a lot of more traditional programs you can't do that so I'm gonna close that out and then I'm gonna open maybe paint will, will be a so this is more the older school uh, I'm just gonna okay about paint okay now here we go another about dialog box but now see how when I try and click over here that screen and it's like no no you can't do that you can't go excuse me I got a cough <coughs> you can't uh, you can't click outside of this box and do anything so that's a little bit more of the mode those are the two extremities you know from the caps lock key or this where it's just like I'm in a mode I can't do anything until I click OK and then yeah now I can go and change all this stuff right well there was a guy who passed away not too long ago let's see if we go so this no modes guy Larry Tesler of Xerox Park and Apple Computer 
two pioneer xerox park is where that's where this windowing user interface came from that was designed by xerox park like a decade before apple and microsoft picked it up whenever you hear that whole thing of like um oh microsoft stole it from apple blah that's complete bs they were both shown it was two competitors a lot of the stuff if you go back in the history of computers there was always competitors um these guys at the time like uh steve jobs and bill gates and people like that they were kids you know they were roughly 20 years old and stuff and uh that's it's a lot like zuckerberg and people like that of our newer generations if you were around and remember when mark zuckerberg was at you know more of a kid than an, an adult when facebook took off these are you know privileged kids not to say they don't put in work i mean they put in a lot of work they they handle business don't get me wrong but they're privileged kids they come from families they come from backgrounds right and they've got a mission and <laughs> there's more to it than may appear on the surface right but anyway that kind of stuff aside that this this was the the underlying mission here was to get this out into the world xerox park was a big uh you know industrious corporation at the time they're kind of like if you think of like almost like leaning more towards the military industrial complex they were leaning more towards stuff like that um or big corporations you know industrious stuff versus apple and microsoft were leaning more to like home smaller office user friendlier type of thing but obviously xerox was working on something that was more intuitive more user friendly but they didn't have that type of it would almost be like kirosira maybe as a company that roughly analogous like mill the road analogous were they're really good at some of these companies are really good at just like innovation right but they're not dialed in they don't have small enough hands to get into consumers to get into that area and for them to do it they'd have to spin off a whole completely different like disruptive division against themselves to do it so it just it doesn't make a whole lot of sense it's like xerox is xerox don't confuse that with you know what i mean it's easier to think of that as one big giant compartmentalization and then apple and all that and microsoft you could think of those as like disruptive spin-offs effectively even though not necessarily right so anyway like i said that aside disliked mode sufficiently to get a personalized license plate on his car that read no modes yeah let's go to his page too uh he used this plate on various cars from the early 80s until his death in 20 really it was 2020 i thought it was like 2019 um along with others he used the phrase don't mode me in for years rallying cry to eliminate or reduce modes and this has gone to where it's become like people are almost getting too overzealously into the no modes quote unquote no modes principle where they won't even allow it like google has deprecated their api to pop up that sort of like that about style dialogue like in that microsoft paint i just showed you they make they you can still do it there's still an api call for programmers to say hey display one of these dialogues that sort of like doesn't let the user do anything until they dismiss it but they deprecated that and what they've basically tell programmers to do is to just disable the one little or 10 little features or whatever inside your application that you don't want the users to interact with instead of blocking the whole thing with that which that can make sense in a lot of circumstances but there's some situations for people it's just easier especially when a program's leaning more to the boards of the prototype phase to just do that classic modal dialogue box and say hey don't allow interaction until you know like sending to printer or something like that um, maybe there's too many variables under the hood for right then and there to just get the product out the door initially then go back and fine-tune so I'm kind of against the deprecation it's like yeah encourage people not to use that API but to actually deprecate it and say it might be removed at some point in the future that's leading to problems with programmers that are like you know I'm that uh say you know they want to avoid using deprecated interfaces but at the same time they need to use that interface so they're sort of in a pickle there 
and I understand and I've even advised people like use it you know screw what some singular big corporation thinks use it if it's to your advantage and even if they do end up deprecating that simple interface you can go back under the hood and re-implement it with not an overwhelming amount of code I'd imagine so anyway we'll go over here Larry Tesler let's see if uh, it I no longer to donate to Wikipedia. There, I consider I really like most of the stuff they have, but there's some political and types of bias going on with a lot of their articles that I'm just not having. But for a lot of these like engineering things, for the most part, they're still pretty decent. Yeah, it doesn't show a picture of his license plate, which is pretty cool. Might as well show that while we're talking about it. Really, that's not even one of the top results. There it is. No modes. And there's pictures of him posing by his car, which are even cooler with it. So it just kind of goes to show how ephemeral some of the results are on the internet. Anyway, yeah, he worked at Xerox Park. That's where he came up with this idea for no modes. And the whole reason I was kind of like getting at it is because I want to come. Here's a Google company, YouTube. I'm viewing the video through DuckDuckGo, but this applies viewing it through YouTube also. And I was just getting frustrated because I noticed that there's this modal effect happening and it frustrates me. And oh, it's just like they try and. Uh, think they're so innovative on one hand and they're like oh we're not doing like a modal dialogue right but at the same time they're doing these little micro modes without even really realizing it I feel like and the problems that it's causing for a lot of and users. I'm hammering up to the seven so I'm the playing string. this video and I'm getting I'm gonna turn it way down string in there with I'm it. just gonna mute it because the sound doesn't really even matter on here for what the purpose I'm displaying it. So if I hit back, it's gonna go five seconds back with the arrow keys is what I'm hitting. And then forward, five seconds forward or whatever, which is really handy. I use it all the time. I can do the down arrow to turn the volume down and the up arrow to turn it up. And that's really secretly like if I do. So here, let me show, I'll go down to uh, 50% here and unmute it, and you can see it's 50% there, and then I'm going to go up to 100%, unmute it, so that and you can see that. So, for the, so far, this is modeless, right? And then I can click on the screen to pause and unpause it, or I can hit spacebar to pause and unpause. Well, if I come down here and I adjust this volume a little bit, and then hit the spacebar to play, and now I want to skip back five seconds. Well, it's not happening. Now, what's happening, if you look down at the volume, is it's the left and right arrows are now adjusting the volume. So effectively, I'm in a mode now that is, uh, I'm stuck in this mode. And if I hit escape to get out of it, it goes out of full screen, which is cool, because that's what escape normally does. Um, so what I have to do is I have to click back into this main screen to get out of that mode. and in doing so now I've paused the video so that's a little bit frustrating and one of the other things I want to show let me see if I can I've already dinked with this video a little bit so maybe if I reopen it and then sorry about my sound quality bouncing in and out it's like if it's just me on the microphone then the Microsoft sound mapper or whatever like I think right now my voice should be coming in high quality and bassy but if I hit play and I'm sharing the audio with something, then all of a sudden I sound like I'm in a tin can. Okay, I'm going to pause it with the space bar. Now you can see this preview window. They're like, oh, you might be leaving or whatever. So we're going to try and like, you know, get you to see if maybe you'll like one of these other videos or something. And I'm like, no, I'm just pausing the video. Maybe I'm using it for instruction. And for one, I want to see the screen, but that's that's beyond the point. But what I want to do now is hit spacebar again to unpause it. 
that worked. <laughs> Sometimes that doesn't work, so let's see here. Sometimes hitting spacebar will do nothing once this comes up, so let me see if I go like mute that. Yeah, now spacebar's muting and unmuting that instead of unpausing the screen. So there's another modal thing. So, okay, <laughs> then I hit spacebar again, and that just popped back up, and now it won't go away. So you can see I can't even define, there's multiple modes going on behind the scenes there. I'm gonna maximize it, spacebar. Okay, now spacebar is working. So spacebar is working there. So anyway, that's my point is that that's ridiculous. Like the left and right arrow keys should always do forward and back. If it's a modeless operation, always. No questions asked. Up and down, look, I have up and down to adjust that volume. Why do I need left and right all of a sudden to switch and adjust that volume? So I know YouTube and these stupid social things will never change their ways, but I'm just putting that out there for the people who do have like some logic to their brain operation and stuff and want to pass that on, like maybe something to watch out for. Don't be heavily influenced by these big players they're stuck in their own boxes, you know, like, yeah, take what's good, what they do that does work, use it, but don't get into like every little micro detail that they do because a lot of times they're violating, this is Google, Google owns YouTube, you know, workers who work at Google can virtually seamlessly transfer to them from YouTube, you know, as a department almost, to my understanding, so they're violating their own principle, they're, they've deprecated this type of an API even though it had a lot of value just because it was like oh that's a quote unquote mode but they're not actually thinking about it on a slightly intellectual level and thinking you know what we're applying micro modes everywhere you know so they've basically taken a problem that wasn't even really a problem it was more of like a developer habit that they think on paper people should avoid and now they've multiplied it so anyway that's it Thanks for listening.